Center on Kardak Radio, presenting the program Spiritism and the Spirit World Around Us. Hello and a wonderful Sunday evening here on the Pacific Northwest to you. We are here on our regular Sunday program. We are every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, at time zones, all time zones in between, and around the world on Sunday. Today is uh, September 9th, 2018, and it's a very exciting program tonight. We're, really, we're going to talk about the future of Earth again. This is episode six of the future of Earth, and we're going to actually be talking about how we is the, the complete future. Where are we going? The planet of regeneration. First, let me tell you, tell your friends about Kardec Radio Facebook page. There are many programs on here that are Facebook Live and good articles and, and et cetera. Uh, and then you can also tell your friends to come on Kardec Radio. It's an app on the Android and the Apple phone. They can go to their their uh, uh, Play Store or, or their App Store and just type in Kardec Radio. And here it is. And here's where we all start, Alan Kardec. So you just put in Kardec Right there, Kardec Radio, and you'll find the app on your phone. And again, this is where we all started. Alan Kardec in the 1850s codified the Spirits book. He talked to many mediums. He wrote up a list of questions and didn't and didn't write down the answers of questions unless multiple mediums agreed with the answers. This is where it all started, my friends. This is the third revelation, as promised in the New Testament. A consoler will come. The, the, the a spirit of truth will come and tell us more. And that is what has happened with Alan Kardec. And of course, in that whole vein, then after that started, more and more spiritist mediums started giving us more and more information. Uh, the exciting thing about spiritism is it's not a static doctrine. Spiritism is a doctrine, not a religion. It is meant for we will always get information from the spirit world, and we will have more and more people talking to spirits and getting more information. Uh, just, oh, anyway, so <clears throat> what we will do? I was Vanessa telling me something, and we'll, she said we'll talk about it later. So we again. Uh, just like Vanessa, there's a Kardec Radio YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure there'll be links to that in the future. Also, I have my own NW Spiritism YouTube channel. I have all my all my information posted to that. I also have a lot of like three to ten minute uh, small videos that play that people can understand more about Spiritism. You can find that if you go to my blogs at nwspiritism.com and click on Alan Kardec's picture. It will it will take you. Um, I'm sorry, it would be underneath this picture. It would take a, a link to my YouTube channel and my channel on BitChute. Since we don't trust YouTube anymore like we used to. Since they censorship, you never know what may happen to uh, different people trying to, to speak about spiritual matters on YouTube. So I also have our program on BitChute. So again, tonight we are talking about the future of Earth. And the future of Earth is coming from this book, How We Are Guided by Spirits, Book 3 of the Spirit World Revealed to an Anglican Vicar. This is all information. The Anglican Vicar is Reverend G. Val Owen, who just had some interesting thing. And what he's telling us, in, in fact, it's not what he's telling us, but he is receiving communications from beyond, from, from, uh, from spirits. And in this case, he talked to the spirit Arnell. And the High Spirit Arnell spoke about the future of our planet to the Reverend G. Valwin in a series of messages in Book 4, The Battalions of Heaven, in 1919, so 99 years ago. And what he's telling us is the Earth will transition from a planet of humans paying off debts from previous lives. Oh, and there's Ros Rosalind. Rosa, hello. I'm so glad you could come again tonight. Which is our planet of atonement, which what they call in spirits, the planet of atonement which we live now, right? We, we pay off our past wrongs, our past mistakes, and we also learn things. It's not all of our, all of our destiny here on earth is to, uh, is to, you know, remove blemishes. A lot of it is just to expand our learning. It's, it has to do with personal growth. But what he is telling us, we will transition from where we are now to a planet of learning and peace what Spiritism calls it, a planet of regeneration. And it has been all planned out by the spirit realm. The future is absolutely certain. Now, the timing 
may not be so certain. That's up to us. This is why it's so hard for people who say, and they're, they're prophets from different places, you know, and, 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 you know, have different doctors and different religions. And, you know, you see a lot of things here that, you know, tell us things will happen and we go, well, that didn't happen. Well, some of it may have been planned to happen, but it didn't because of, of different uh, factors involved. Because one thing we have to remember, the spirit world is very complex. And it's our, our, our ladder of learning, our, our learning, our, our future, the way, the way we work as a human collective determines the next step. Now, the same for all of us actually here on Earth. We have we come in, into birth with a with a pre plan, right? We come up with a set of planned trials. But sometimes some kind of go off because of obstinance or this willful, you know, say, no, I'm not going to do that, right? I'm not going to, you know, as you're guided and just refuse to be guided, then there'll be alternate plans. The same thing happens to us. So that's why I want to make sure is there's not absolute predetermination predestination. There is a set of trials for all of us. There is a goal and there is a continually dynamic uh, work behind the scenes with the spirit world, which you know, most of us don't see, to get us towards that goal. Just like any large corporation, when they want to set us, they want to get a project out or they we want to go into a new market, they will not say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Step one, two, three, four. No, they will look at things and they will, they will analyze and then they will replan and this is what happens to us that's why anything even what the high spirits told the reverend g val owen is not absolutely sure as far as what things are going to happen when but the end will happen and this is what's so interesting so this is what we have to have faith and this is why this is why we is important to learn and study about spiritism because not everybody will be able to achieve and be here on earth when we become a planet of regeneration. Those who are still not ready will not be part of it. So think about that for a second. The same thing as what Spiritism tells us that when in the book uh, On the Way to the Light, Sakura Pachiko Xavier, uh, and dictated to him by his, his spirit mentor, Emmanuel, when he said that a lot of the earth was helped and helped guided and brought to another level by spirits from uh, Capella. And these were spread throughout the earth. And these people were there because they were not able to go with Capella into a, from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration. They were said, no, oh, sorry, you're not ready. You're going to earth. And we don't want to do the same thing for each of us. So let's talk about that. So the Reverend G. Valwin, and he was and probably most still is a part of the great endeavor to move people of the earth to begin their spiritual journey, to cast off their lives of excessive materialism. He made a big splash in the early 1900s. Uh, and it's actually book four of the Battalion's Heaven was in uh, published in the 1920s. And it was very interesting. And I know he's part of spiritism because he, he appeared in the book Voltaire and he was part of a, in, you know, part of a spiritist group talking about how they can help as when he was already uh, passed away on earth, part of the spiritist group to help the earth bring, bring the earth, bring the human collective into up to another level. And so he and other spirits now, and then when Reverend, uh, Reverend Z. Val Owen talked to Arnell, he was telling him, Arnell was telling him how he and other spirits were shown the impending destiny of earth in order to illustrate the goal they are working towards. Now, again, this is like, this is what's so interesting about the spirit world. It's all so familiar, yet fantastic. Yes, uh, Matthew uh, Capella um, is uh, from another, uh, it's a constellation with uh, multiple planets there. So, yes, that was from, and you can actually read about that either in my book, um, uh, Explore Your Destiny, or you can also look at it in the On the Way to the Light which you can go to the uh, to the bookstore. You click on his picture on my site. You'll go to the EDI CEI bookstore and you'll see the book on the way to the light. I recommend everybody to get that book. It will tell you about how the spirit world uh, guided the earth from even forming from, from, you know, just dust, cosmic dust to where we are today. It's very interesting. Again, on the way to the light. So, 
Now, as I was saying, so it's just like here, right here, like this is what's so interesting about this here. And it, and it should not surprise us because we are just like a lot of our organizations kind of function, not anywhere as well, because we, you know, we have, we all have our, our, our uh, bad characteristics, right? Oh, Anderson De Silva, hello. So in, in Arnell and other spirits were shown this because in our world or with earth and heaven around the world, they still had to be motivated. And Jesus is the governor of our planet. He and his ministers and some of them are like uh, Socrates who came in Socrates and Buddha. And of course, uh, uh, so and actually uh, we've been told that Socrates and Buddha will be reincarnating uh, on, on the earth uh, pretty soon, if not already. So, but what I was saying is people are showing these things. So here's the future. This is what you're working for, right? So our nail was part of helping the earth, helping spirits, helping, you know, different people, different souls around the earth improve. And what they're showing is, okay, this is where you're going. This is why it's important to what you're doing. So they are actually helping people be motivated in their jobs, just like we do here in a typical corporation on earth. And this is what he saw as it went around. There upon this axis, so he saw a big, a large globe. There appeared shapes of lands and waters upon its outer circumference. These were not coterminous in outline with those of Earth as they are today, meaning they weren't the same. I'll carry on. We were now being shown our future sphere of work, and these were changing as they are now changing on Earth's surface, but more quickly. The ages ahead of you were foreshortened for us, and we read them as a moving model. There also appeared cities and the peoples and animals also, and the engines which the people made for their several uses. And as the globe turned its surface to us, continually revolving, we were able to see the progress of it all. Let me stop there in that quote. So there was a globe going around, and there was, and it, to them, is you know, it looked alive, and they were seeing the future of the earth go. And, you know, maybe the oceans recede or expand and different cities were there. So let me uh, let me carry on with the quote. I mean this take in token of other lands, your own islands, meaning the uh, British islands. I noted then first as they will be a few years hence. Then they sailed round out of view. When they came before us again, they had become changed a little in configuration of coastlines and as to their cities and people. So as the globe revolved, these lands, the whole human race, and their works of building and engines of locomotion and all their handiwork progressed in their ages, but condensed from millennia into hours, to thousands of years into hours. I must suit my words to you, to your way of thinking, my son. Years have not the same significance to us as they have to you. Again, that's something we're told all the time by the spirit world. Time is not that important in the spirit world. It's different for us. Let me continue. Now, as it would not be permitted to me to fish for you in the depths of future ages, you of earth must net your own supper. That is as it should be. Meaning, let me stop there. Meaning we, we have to work. We have to work it out. He's not going to tell us everything. But he's, he's giving us also, helping us give that goal, right? This is where you're heading towards. But you got to work for it. You got to carry on. Nevertheless, it is permitted me to tell you where the fishing ground are like to be. Then those who will think of me as a good admiral will set their sail to my chart and out upon their quest. So, now the earth became more beautiful as it sailed round upon its voyage of the ages. The light increased upon its surface and its mass became more radiant from within. The peoples also hurried not so greatly here and there for nature had become more at one with them and yielded more genuinely to their abundance. So their lives were less fevered and more given to meditation. Thus they became ever more in harmony with one with the others and all of them more nearly attuned to us who were able in our turn to spend upon them a larger degree of our power and of our sweeter pace. And this attunement advance, it enthused us with the largest of happiness to know we have gained for ourselves after much stress of warfare, these younger companions of our ancient race. It was very sweet to us, my son. And gradually the earth itself was changed. Now think about that. This tells us, this tells us so much. So this is what Arnell said about the earth. He saw the British Isles change as the centuries passed, the millennia passed. 
He witnessed the world, the technology, the people all transform after thousands of thousands of years flew by in a simulation of that which will occur to earth as dictated by God and carried out by the legions of spirits following the commands from Christ, right? You have God, he comes out with commands, or maybe intervening higher spirits than Christ between that and Christ, as far as the earth is concerned, gives his his orders, and these are carried out to, to guide the future of the earth. Now, let's talk about this. So before and after the messages were delivered to the Reverend Ji Baowen, there have been communications about trans, the transition of our planet from other spiritist mediums. And the primary message is always the same. We are in a time of transformation where our planet would become a regenerative world. So hence, this change, this modifying of the human race in our culture and our technology is the apocalypse. This is the apocalypse. Now, for many Christians, the apocalypse is a series of calamitous events, disasters that would affect the entire planet. But according to spiritism, and a lot of this is in, uh, Matthew, I'll tell you, this is in the book On the Way to Light. This is why this book is so good. But according to the spirits, the earth will change. Yes, disasters will still occur, right? Wars will probably still occur, hopefully not as bad as they were in the past. But overall, our planet will convert gradually. And one of the reasons this is, is when he said, remember, he said, he quote, he saw the whole earth be brighter. And that is when spirits come to earth, they see us, they see us. And they see, they see you know, either dark spirits or, or ignorant and depressed. Or they see humans that are, are more brighter, they're more calm, less stressed, more spiritual. And what, to, for us to become a plan of regeneration, a majority of us really need to become that brighter light. We need to under, we need to work, we need to study, we need to understand spiritism, our, our spirituality, you know, whatever religion you want to use, Buddhism, Christianity, whatever you want to use to become a more nicer, better person and getting rid of your primitive emotions on the inside, right? That's what we're here. It, for us to have that better vibration with each other and that better harmony. So to understand, to understand the coming changes to a world, one must first know the present and the past state of earth. Where has it come from and where's it going? Because we are all passengers and are all locked into our seats until we reach the final destination. We don't have a choice. It's like we're students sent to school by our parents, and we know we have to be there, right? So let's start in the book, with The Gospel According to Spiritism. Now, let me just show you. This is really, this is my second favorite. This is a great book. Again, go to the, click his picture on my website, EDICI Bookstore. You can find this book. Also, this book and the Spirits book, all of Kardec's book, you can find the PDF version. So you just hunt for them, uh, and you, you'll find them. That's how I found them first. So let's let's go over very quickly where our planet started from and where we're going. And all this is in the Gospel According to Spiritism. It's also in my book, Calvary Grounded by Spirit. So all this information is in here, right here, where I've kind of categorized it, how we are guided by spirits. And this includes the future of Earth, what I'm talking about right now. So where do we come? Where are we right now? Okay, so Matthew asks, in that case, how long do planetary spiritual phases last, right? Like from atonement to regeneration. To happy. So, you know, I wish I knew that that answer and because I, I would tell you and I'd write all about it. And I, I think the sad news is it's probably, okay, so the spirit world has probably, has done, we're not the only planet going through these, th these phases, right? There's other planets, other phases. And they probably have, they probably have in mind a certain number of thousands or ten thousands or millions of years to go from one to another, right? And we're probably within some sort of standard deviation of that because they, you know, they know once they get a race that can be intelligent in humans, how long it takes us primitive spirits to become better and better. Now, as for the exact timing, I don't know. Now, I do know, um, you know, if you read about where we, what they've said before, Emmanuel and even other spirits talking to Jeeva Owen, we've had a starting primitive planet, you know, from the first intelligence of mankind. We've had, you know, uh, Atlantis, Lemuria, other civilizations, which he said, other ones have actually come and gone on the earth. So we've probably been in this primitive world 
uh, probably in the primitive world, probably before that, when we were just savages, and then we've probably been in a world, this is just my guess, I'm sure others, other spiritists who know more, talk to spiritists, media know more about that. Yes, so Matthias can vary from planet to planet. My guess is we've been in this world of atonement for, you know, maybe 40,000 years. I don't know. It started with, you know, when Atlantis and those types of Lemuria was there. We've probably been there for, for quite a while. Now, where did we start out? We started out as a primitive world, right? The primitive world intended for the first incarnations of the human soul. The beings that inhabit them are to a certain extent rudimentary, right? They have human form, but are devoid of any beauty. Their instincts are not tempered by any sentiment of refinement or benevolence or by any notions of right or wrong. Brute force is the only law with no industry or inventions. They spend life in the conquest of food. The earth was once a primitive world. Think about the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnum at the same time. The spirit will probably decide, no, the Neanderthals, they're never going to advance. They're not good enough organically for what we want. And they were wiped out by the Cro-Magnum who they used as a vehicle for us. Now, where are we now? A world of trial and expiation, also called atonement, a planet of atonement. We are here now. There's more evil present than good. This is why life is not that easy, because it's not supposed to be why you are reincarnated on planet Earth. You have lessons to learn, right? You're in school. This is not a luxury resort. Now, where are we going towards? We're going towards a regenerative world where souls still have something to expiate, right? There's still some pain off the debt of a past wrong, what they say, and they may absorb new strength by resting from the fatigue of a struggle. There's still some level of, of evil, but much reduced. The good outweighs the bad, and consequently, there's no motive for hatred or discord. It just comes from within us as it does now. Now, number f the fourth one is the happy world, right? So in happy world, we still retain our human form, although the senses are more acute, where people who are in power are placed there for their dedication to others, not themselves. And I'm just summarizing these really fast. You find much more information uh, in the Gospel According to Spiritism and my other books. And then lastly, of course, is the heavenly or divine world, where good reigns completely. All inhabitants are purified spirits. There is no evil. Humans are lighter, less dense, and lifespan is much longer. That's where we're going to. Now, Let's talk for a minute. What's in the New Testament? What, what are we told about the apocalypse in the New Testament? So given that Earth is a planet of expiation or atonement, the spirit realm is actively involved in motivating us to a better spiritual plane. Now, the spirit of Emmanuel, who was the spirit guide for Chico Xavier, he inspired many books psychographed by, by Chico, wrote in his, his book, On the Way to the Light, about the reason for the spirit realm to send the apocalypse revelations to to the Apostle John. And this is what Emmanuel said. A few years before the end of the first century AD, after coming of the new doctrine, we mean Christianity, the powers of the spirit world made an analysis of the dreadful situation of the world in view of the future. Let me stop right there. Again, this is what is so exciting about reading about spiritism. And just in these small paragraphs, this powers of the spirit world made an analysis. So imagine they must have these Monte Carlo simulations of everything that could happen with every human form on life and every every human you know queued up to be incarnated and what can happen right this is this is the, the complexity of how we're guided is 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 just amazing you know we think of heaven as oh we, we you know we die we we sit on this cloud we play the heart music right it's so much more than that this is what spiritism brings us there's so much more to understand about this so I'll continue on the divine master called to the higher spheres, the spirit John, who was still being held prisoner by the bounds of the earth. And the astonished, afflicted apostle read the symbolic language of the invisible world. The Lord told him to deliver his knowledge to the planet as a warning to all the nations and peoples of the earth. And the old apostles of Patmos transmitted the extraordinary warnings of the apocalypse to his disciples. All of the events posterior to John's life are foreseen therein. Certainly, the apostles' description, description frequently enters the obscurest terrain. One can plainly see that his human language could not faithfully replicate the divine expression of his vision of remarkable interest for the history of mankind. The wars, the ideological struggles of Western civilization are all foreseen in minute detail. And its most dreadful image, which even today is still offered to the eyes of the modern world, is that of the deviant church of Rome, symbolized as the beast clothed in purple and drunk on the blood of the saints. So 
let's look back at a summary of part of the New Testament of the Apocalypse, chapter 13, and analyze through the eyes of the Spirit. Emmanuel, this is what he said, chapter 13. This uh, in the, in the uh, I'm sorry, the summary of the Apocalypse. A beast comes out of the sea. It has 10 horns, seven heads, containing diadems and blasphemous names. Like a leopard, but paws like a bear, mouth like a lion. It is given power, thrown, and authority by the dragon. Now, so I'll tell you right now, the dragon's also called, it's, they call it the dragons. You see that a lot in spiritism when they talk about the the, the leaders in the, uh, the dark abyss, the underworld. One head was mortally wounded and healed. In wonderment, the whole world followed after the beast. People worship beast and dragon, their authority to last only 42 months. Granted authority over all people, nation, and race. Worshipped by all those who do not have the names in the book of life. Let, let him who has ears heed these words. If one is destined for captivity, into captivity he goes. If one is destined to be slain by the sword, by the sword he will be slain. Such is the faithful endurance that distinguishes God's holy people. A second beast comes up out of the earth. He used the authority of the first beast to promote his interest by making the world worship the first beast whose mortal wound had been healed. Performs great miracles, leads astray earth's inhabitants by telling them to make an idol of the first beast. Life is given to the image of the beast and the power of speech and the ability to put to death anyone who refuses to worship it. Forces all men, rich and poor, to accept the stamp image on their right hand or forehead. No one allowed to buy or sell anything unless first marked with the name of the beast or the number that stood for its name. A certain wisdom is needed here. With a little in ingenuity, anyone can calculate the number of the beast. For it is a number that stands for a certain man. The man's number is 666. Okay, how, you know, everyone knows that number is 666, right? So first, we are told the authority of the beast will last 42 months. Now, this is what's so interesting in the book On the Way to the Light. Emmanuel tells us the correct interpretation. This is what he says. The apocalypse states that the beast would stay great and blasphemous for 42 months, adding that his number would be 666. By examining the importance of symbols at that time and following a certain course of interpretation, we can take each month as being 30 years instead of 30 days. Hence, there is a period of 1,260 years, which is precisely the period 610 AD to 1870 AD of our era, when the papacy was consolidated from the time of its appearance with the emperor Focus in 607 to the decree of papal infability by Pius IX in 1870, which marked the, dec the decadence and absence of Vatican's authority in light of humankind's scientific, ph philosophic, and religious evolution. Therefore, the beast is the Catholic Church, which became corrupted over time, forgetting that it is the church who is to serve, not the populace to serve the church. Emmanuel tells us of many occasions when the spirit world attempted to bring the church back to its beginnings. One such effort when one of Jesus' apostles reincarnated as St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis tried to demonstrate by his example that the church was meant to go out and help people, not just to collect money or to remain isolated in monasteries. Now, what about the famous number 666? If the Catholic Church was the beast, what, what does 666 signify? Again, Emmanuel has the answer. This is what he says, as the number 666, without referring to the interpretations using Greek numerals, but rather using the Roman numerals, because they were the most widespread and well-known at the time, Roman Empire. We must keep in mind that the Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Church uses these three titles. Now, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. This is in Latin. But Vicarius Generis De Interis, word number one, Vicarius Fili Die, and Dicleri which means, respectively, God's chief vicar on earth, number two, vicar of the Son of God, and the last one, captain of the clergy. Those are the three titles. All one needs is a little game of patience. Adding up the Roman numerals found in each pap papal title, remember, they're in Roman, right, you can use their numerals or their alphabet, right, the letters are, are the numbers, and one will find the same result of 666 in each one of them. So they took, they took, the, the Latin of the, the three titles of the of the Pope of the Catholic Church and for using using the the, uh, the letters 
you can create the Roman numerals and you get the 666 in each one of them. So hence, the beasts were the popes that contributed to the church, church's journey from a simple gathering place where people congregated to discuss the teaching of Jesus and to assist those in need to the builder of wealth for the religious class at top by siphoning the hard-earned money of millions of peasants. To the present-day Catholic Church benefit, many of their priests and practices have reformed themselves. So I don't want to say you know anything's bad now at all. To a more benevolent or organization, perform many good services for their flock. So that's it. So then there's a great number of programs, and all very interesting. You know, people say, you know, the apocalypse is occurring. We're going to have this and that. And yes, you know, there will be disasters. There will be all those things. But this is not. Though. Let's talk about this spiritist apocalypse. So how will the apocalypse, according to spiritism, occur? Now, so before, we were warned about the corruption, right? The misleading of people. So how will the end come, according to spiritism? But it will come for those little spirits who did not care to learn from the successive lives on this planet. That's one thing. They will be moved to another planet. As more spirits understand what it means to be selfless, charitable, and honorable in all circumstances, thereby shedding the constant striving for material goods, they will remain within the earth's sphere, whether in spiritual or physical form. The good, the, the learned spirits, will vie for the honor of assisting the transformation of this planet. The last question of the 1,019 questions in the spirits book, this is in this book right here, in the spirit, the last question, 1019, tells us exactly how the apocalypse will roll out. Here's the question. Will the reign of goodness ever be established upon the earth? And here's the answer, very short and sweet. Goodness will reign upon the earth when among the spirits who come to dwell in it, the good shall be more numerous than the bad. For they will then bring in the reign of love and justice, which are the source of good and happiness. So as I started out this program, I said, remember when when uh, our, the spirit Arnell saw the earth become brighter and the people come brighter? This is it's all dependent upon us. When among the spirits, the good shall be more numerous than the bad. We've seen that so much, haven't we? So hence, as people, more people are truly good. The weight of the understanding, charitable, fraternal. The weight of the culture will influence others to follow their example. Those living will have some time to improve themselves, to turn away from the pursuit of coinage by any means. Others, not so lucky. The spirit books tells us their fate. That's what he says about people who do not reform themselves, do not improve themselves. The spirits of the wicked people who are mowed down each day by death, and all who endeavor to arrest the onward movement, I mean stopping the onward movement, will be excluded from the earth and compelled to incarnate themselves elsewhere. For they would be out of place among those nobler races of human beings, whose felicity would be impaired by their presence among them. They will be sent into never worlds, less advanced than the earth, and will be then fulfill hard and laborious missions, which will furnish them with the means of advancing while contributing also to the advancement of their brethren of those younger worlds, less advanced than themselves. Okay, what are they telling us? In other words, people who continue to behave badly will have a surprise waiting for them when they expire. They'll wake up in the spirit world and then expecting to return here to spread more chaos, they will be sent away to other less advanced planets to live among those who are on low, another level. Now, I want to make sure everybody understands that doesn't mean that they will always be there, right? Just like the people who came from Capella, who came to our, our earth, they will then be given, you know, remedial. Oh, okay, we'll put you back in school again, right? And you'll you know, just have to start that class all over again. And they will at some time become a perfect spirit too, a pure spirit, I should say. So there's no, there's no ever, you know, eternal help for anyone right it's it's the you know, okay if you're not learning we'll, we'll get you somewhere where you can learn so think about what happens to those who actually had to go backward to another planet that doesn't mean they go back as far as spirituality they just into a different environment so imagine dying after residing let's say in a beautiful mansion by by the sea you know bought by systematically stealing the wealth of others right you've made all this money through nefarious means then you wake up another life. Now, remember, you don't have your perfect memory, but you've got your instinct and your conscience and your kind of personality. 
Then landing in the midst of a city with the reek of an open sewer, no modern technology, where luxury is having hot water boiled for you maybe once a week or once a month. This is the punishment awaking all those who resist modifying their behavior and attitudes that celebrate robbing innocence, violence, and feeling superior to those that don't stoop to their level. Now, I use the word punishment, and I shouldn't, but because really all they're saying is when they take you to that, they're not punishing you. They're saying, okay, nope, here's another way to learn. Okay, okay, you didn't learn that way. Now you're going to go back here, right? So even then, under God's benevolence, they too shall have a chance to redeem themselves and reascend to a better planet. This weeding out of reluctant spirits and the populating of the planet with good spirits will be a gradual conversion. This is what's happening now. We are in the midst of that gradual conversion. Other people have said, other uh, very spiritual people who I've talked to and I've seen other programs by, they're saying, yeah, there's this new harmony, this new vibration on the planet. And they're correct. And that is because we there is this gradual conversion. This is it. This is, you know, and now, will this happen in a lifetime? No way will this happen in a lifetime. I figure, given where we are now, you know, if we can make it in a thousand years, we will be very lucky. Now, I could be totally off. This is just my thesis, right? This is just my idea, and I could be wrong. So, but I, you know, I think the general consensus among spiritists, mediums, and other spiritists is that we are in that the beginning of that conversion. We are being groomed to attain the state required as for to inhabit a non-expiratory world. In other words, a planet of generation. In Alan Kardec's book, Genesis, the apocalypse will not occur in the Big Bang, but will be, according to the spirits, the earth will not be transformed by a cataclysm that will suddenly wipe out an entire generation. The current generation will disappear gradually, and the new one will follow it in the same way, without there having been any change in the natural order of things. So, it's not like what a lot of people interpret the apocalypse uh, as in, in the New Testament, where, you know, all of a sudden people have died, and they, because, you know, the Catholic Church and you know, most of Christianity doesn't believe in reincarnation, that these people have been kind of asleep in this stasis, and then they wake up into this beautiful world. No, these people that have lived, literally what is happening is that each of us reincarnate over and over again, and we and we continually, hopefully, some of us part. We have life after life, probably me in, in the past, of not improving. But hopefully, we start improving as our life goes on. This is really what this is. This is an ongoing process of improving not just each of us, right, but the whole human race. So what happens to us who remain? So the spirit of truth, as promised in the New Testament, John uh, chapter 14, verses 15 and 17. As the consoler sent to Alan Kardec to reveal the doctrines of spiritism, tells us in the gospel, uh, according to spiritism, what will be. This is what uh, is quoted. The time is near for fulfillment of those things proclaimed for the transformation of humankind. Now, the gospel of spiritism was published in the 1850s. So again, let me tell you, when the spirit world talks about time, it's not on our level. Okay? 100 years is like nothing. The time, I'll continue on the quote, the time for fulfillment of those things proclaimed for the transformation of humankind. Blessed would be those who have worked in the Lord's field selflessly and with no other motive than charity. Their work days will be paid a hundredfold more than what they expected. Blessed would be those who said to their fellow men and women, brothers and sisters, let us work together and continue our efforts so that the master may find the work accomplished at his coming. So, what Matthew said, it's also going to be very disappointing for people who believe in a literal rapture in the heaven before the apocalypse. Yes, this is why I'm trying to say this is, you know, prepare yourself. This is not, that's not just a literal rapture where people disappear and then reappear after everything is, is, is set. So, it's a gradual thing. It, it takes our work, right? Look, um, I'm going to kind of get off on tangent, but this, you know, I, it's hard, and, and Alan Kardec made this argument, is that hard to believe that God would let you live one life and say, no, you're internally in hell, and think about some poor person that was born in a criminal family with a horrible mother and father, and they did horrible things, you know, the environment, their parents, their, I mean, and that that person would be condemned forever. 
versus someone who was raised in a very, like me in a very good environment, very loving parents. Even then I've, you know, totally screwed up many, many times. Is that fair? No, God loves us and God gives us chance after chance. And, you know, this, whoever that is, will at one time become in the future, a pure spirit. So let me finish the quote. Blessed will be those who said to their fellow men and women, brothers and sisters, let us work together and combine our efforts so that the master may find the work accomplished at his coming. For the master will say to them, come unto me, you who have been good servants, and you have known how to silence your jealousies and discord so that no harm will come to the, to the work. So how interesting that is, right? So this is really the important point. 100 reward, 100 fold reward will be life on a regenerative planet where good outweighs evil and we can thrive in an environment relatively free of discord with no fear of war or other violent ends. A place, a safe, safe heaven to continue learning how we can progress to become a pure spirit. Now, Arnell, let me come back into uh, from uh, the Reverend G. Valwin talking about this. So Arnell describes the transition. So now we're going to get more information of how this earth with the harmony of vibrations actually changes. So first, let's talk about psychometry. So psychometry is the inherent vibrations infused into matter. In fact, I have a YouTube video explaining what psychometry is as explained to us by the spirits. And that is where someone has the ability to touch simple car keys or articles of clothing, and it tells the story of all that intersected with that particular slice of matter. Arnell tells us that cosmic psychometry are the vibrations of entire planets. And it's more than that, right? Not a mere receptacle of vibrations, but a process of accumulated vibrations which infuse an object and transforms it. Our collective vibrations work to modify the vibrations of Earth. Arnell describes the process. This is what he says. Again, this is so interesting. It tells us about where, where we came from and where we're going back. Okay, so he says this. And so it came to pass that as the people of Earth progressed spiritually higher, so the Earth itself gradually but faithfully answered to their influence, which was regist registered upon the substance of which Earth is built up. Matter became less gross and more ethereal. That is why it became brighter with radiance from within as we saw it revolving. It was no more and no nor less than cosmic psychometry in mass, but essentially identical with you at present, no manifested in detail. As Earth, as Earth and its peoples become more and more etherealized, become less dense, so the whole spiritual were able with greater ease to consort with those peoples, and their conversation was both more frequent and more free than it is today. And to shorten my story, we came to that period when progress had been made to such a degree that the communion of spirits with people of earth was normal and continual. What's he saying? So as we and the planet become less dense, just as a higher spirit is composed of more energy and less matter than a lower spirit, our entire globe shall fade away from view in our current dense solar system and appear as a planet in the same orbit in a solar system composed of other higher worlds. Right? There are planets in our solar system we cannot see or detect because they are ethereal, less dense. We, we have no way to look at see them right now. Arnell tells us that our current level of science, science may be able to understand the proportions of matter of different planets, but we are unable to discern their spiritual level. At the same time, there are worlds that progress, progress and become ethereal. The civilizations which reside on those planets are able to detect our dense planet, and they interact with us without our knowledge. There is more. This is what Arnell tells us. There are others which are not visible to you of Earth, for they are those which have progressed in their etherealization beyond the material and have become ethereal. They may be seen by those who live on planets of like substance. They are not spirit, spiritual, but between the material and the spiritual estate. Their inhabitants are cognizant of the other planets of which Earth is one, and they act upon these planets very powerfully. Being at the same time more progressed than the Earth people and yet nearer in a state than the spiritual people are. These of which I speak are true planets themselves, but there are other ethereal planets, so to say. One of these encompassed Earth, whereas in, it is of the engrossed ether of which this ethereal planet is composed that Earth is suffused. 
This is not merely a belt of ether solely for the surface of Earth. Most of these who have lived on Earth in bygone ages, and some have never been Earth dwellers, never having reached material manifestations in body and flesh. So very interesting. I don't quite understand what he means by that. So it just shows you how complex and multi-layered and dense the data of the physical and the spirit world and those things in all the different levels between our dense planet and other planets. So, you know, therefore, when they describe these things, it's really what, what are we trying to learn? We live in a multidimensional universe within multiple universes. Our current science knows our layer of visible matter isn't enough to account for the universe we live in. Our nail exposes the truth that we are mere children playing at science compared to the higher spiritual civilization. The complexity of God's creation is unfathomable to us, but it may be helpful to think that we are swimming in a sea of numbers. Ponder that each one of us sends out encoded messages constantly, our thoughts, our feelings, our current status, and our location, to name a few. That our planet, our matter, has all been created by force of will, and it is kept in place by the face and force of high spirits. Visualize like a dense matrix of numerals, strings, and structures in which a multivariate analysis was exposed that all numbers, all data within any table are all related to other pieces of information. Slice the universal library of everything any way you choose. And another whole ecosystem of spiritual, ethereal material is discovered. Add that all is fluid and all is connected to everything else that a thought can change a data point. Hence, all other relationships are reset. Only then can one get a small inkling in the true state of the universe in which we reside. It is difficult to visualize the truth. I, I can't really see. I, I'm attempting to explain, but can I really understand it? Not yet. No. And, it, you know, we've, we've been told, don't worry about it. You're not going to. But I'm trying to get us closer. And I, you know, but this is how I interpret it. So it's difficult. When we see density, thickness, and stability all around us, when only children believe that a thought can conjure an object, our physical limitations are for a purpose. The spirit world has deliberately held all other variables steady, steady so we may live on Earth and concentrate on one primary task, transformation of our character. Once that is done, we can be safely exposed to a realm beyond our imagination. Now, Arnell described the revolving globe and the future of mankind on Earth. He told the Reverend G. Bowen how each one of us, those who have chosen the path to the light, will accompany the earth to a higher state. Now, Arnell then speaks of the finale, the last act of earth as it becomes wholly transformed. This is what he says. Again, this is all in my book, How We Are Guided by Spirits. Earth, as we beheld it for, for, before us, had come to that stage when the ethereal and material had almost equal place in contact. The bodies of men were still a matter, but purified and more readily co-responsive with the heavens of spirit life than in former times, these same times in which you live today. Earth had responded to the upliftment and the vegetation which it produced lay upon its bosoms, almost sentient as a babe upon, upon his mother's breast. No kingdoms were upon earth, but one confederacy of peoples whose colors were not so diverse for each from another as they are today. Science was also not the science of Europe as it is now, but the powers of ethereal dynamics being understood, the whole life of men was transformed. What's he saying? In the future, we are lighter. We easily communicate with the spirit realm. We are at peace. We live together as one in harmony. But it wasn't just humans that were changed. Everything was else changed too. Minerals which make it to earth were charged to be in harmony with their planet. Plant life was given the ability to respond to our thoughts. Animals had increased sensations and personalities. The ethereal intelligence of the universe inundated all of us, given each division of organic and inorganic life a boost, a little more awareness, an increased sense of connectivity, and a place within the vibrations and harmony of the earth. Arnell describes the earth as radiant with living entities covering the surface. He tells us that earth now shone like one great and very beautiful pearl, but with veins of green and gold and crimson and amber and blue upon it. As with, and within it, it shone its native light aglow with fire of worship about its heart, which throbbed with life and happiness as the impulses of the creative lords and the myriads in that invaded it and wooed it from this responsive and simmering love, loveliness. So, 
What does that mean? It means that paradise does await us. It's not something we have to travel towards. It doesn't entail a physical journey. It doesn't entail just one death. It doesn't entail just one birth, right? To arrive at paradise takes an arduous mental trek, a trip to rewire our personalities, to cut off ties from excessive material desires, to rid ourselves of primitive emotions, hate, envy, and selfishness. It's really tough. To step forward toward the light in all humbleness, open to learn that which we have resisted for so many lives, that love is the greatest force in the universe, that kindness and respect for all is the foundation upon which this paradise shall be created. Watching the earth globe spin, Arnell hears a hymn that rises from earth, a song of love and expectation. So he, he hears this beautiful song of love and expectation. And his song is in my book. I have that. I have that there. So the future of earth. So in summary, the future is written. We shall move from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration. There will be paradise on earth for those who have demonstrated the intellectual and spiritual maturity to be allowed to ascend with our planet. Now, I don't want to frighten people think, oh, I have to be perfect. You know, I can't lose my temper and I can't do that. No, we just need to get on the right track, right? We need to, to show that we are improving. Just like a child in class, even the child may not understand certain concepts, may not do that well, but if they are trying, the teacher will help them. So don't be afraid of just Try, try and start not just keeping your mouth so you don't say bad things, but getting your thoughts too. And just, you know, and that doesn't mean we have to be, as I said before, in many different uh, YouTube videos, it doesn't mean we have to be pushovers. It doesn't mean we have to let people take advantage of us. Now we can still use, you know, righteous indignation. We shouldn't be, you know, lose our temper or angry, but we can still be indignant and say, no, I'm sorry, you cannot do that, right? We can, we can still be that way. It's not, when Jesus said the meek, it didn't mean someone who just got stepped all over. No, it means someone who is calm and cool and able to handle situations in a non, um, you know, uh, emotional, angry, confrontational way. So this path we're on, this probable path, I'm, it has and will be slow and torturous, given the obstacles, which are the number of souls on earth and spirits in the lower zone and below who are still tied to material bonds of physical life and their dedication to achieve material pleasures by any means at their disposal. Now, one time, Chico Xavier said, yeah, so about three out of ten people go to heaven, the so 30%. So that's not a majority. Yet. Now, I would love if, if you may have a comment section or talk to spirit medium. What was the percentage of people, let's say, back in the time of Christ or before, right? You know, maybe we could we could see, you know, because we know he said in the spirit book, when the majority of people are good and you know, kind spirits, this will really start taking place, right? So if right now we're at three out of ten, that means we have to get to five or six out of ten. This is why I say another thousand years. We have to get, we have to get there where the majority of people, right, are kind and generous, right? Fraternal, loving, charitable people. So all of this and all of this is tied not just together, but also individually, right? So individual lesson plans for each person. Will have to be created to lead each one of us to the realization that life on earth is temporary and useful only for the purpose of character improvement. Situations must be manufactured whereby entire nations, societies, and religions will be forced to learn that grasping for power and mindless intolerance are not the path to happiness or to salvation. Now, the trek will be hard for those who understand the problem. They will have to assist where they can and promote peace and love in whatever manner they are able to perform. Even the good of heart will be buffeted by the upheavals and political cataclysms which are becoming their way. The battle will be on two fronts, the physical world and the spirit world. Incarnates will be swept up in events and the discredits residing in the lower zone in the dark abyss will fight to keep their cruel kingdoms. And remember, in the planet of regeneration, we won't have these, these spirits who are not part, who are not in heaven now. They will be gone. We won't have the uh, influence of much immature spirits around us. This will like well, another reason why life on a regenerative planet will be much better. There won't be obsession, those type of things. 
The lower and unrepentant spirits understand well that when earth transitions, they will be removed, sent to undesirable locations where they will land back at the bottom of the totem pole. They'll have to fight for eons once again to regain that power they had while on and below the earth. A plan of regeneration has no place for spirits who are not on the path dedicated to love, fraternity, and honesty. Pollution of the spiritual atmosphere will not be allowed by those who have not made or actively striving for progress. Spirits who have rejected the light made the conscious decisions to select themselves for removal. While there will there will still be the presence of some bad influence by spirits, right? We're not perfect, right? We have not yet totally let go of negative characteristics. And there are still some debts to pay for past wrongs. On the whole, the amount of chaos, inequality, violence, and corruption is greatly reduced. Reduced to the extent that these should be rare occurrences, not the daily litany of bad news that we live through today. And that's just the next step, right? Beyond that is the goal of being a happy world, where there is an even greater level of love and understanding. And of course, next is the ultimate destiny of a heavenly or divine world, where there is no hint of evil in our physical form approaches that of a spirit. So hence, as we collectively make that long and arduous journey towards a future where we shall be in greater communion with the spirit world, where guidance is at hand as we need it, where people are in harmony, where race is not a factor, where nations work together, look to that vision to carry you through each hurdle, each tragic episode in your life to a beautiful state, to a paradise on earth. So as we end, I just want like to you know ask everybody, please share this video. Please share the information about uh, Kardec Radio on the Facebook page, Kardec Radio that you can get from your Apple or your Android device. Download that app, Kardec Radio. Go to my blog, nwspiritism.com. There's many articles, and I have, of course, links to uh, my YouTube channel and my BitChute channel. Please tell other people about that. If, if you see someone who's interested in spirituality and wants to learn about things, people who are stressed. I know, look, in this current, look, we always say it's always worth every, you know, every time we live in, it's always, oh, this is horrible. This is, you know, learning about spiritualism in the long view of things should make everything less stressful. Look, everything we're going through, no matter what side of whatever political spectrum you're on, know this. Nothing's going to last here for, for that long. This is all temporary. This is all just having us learn. This is like, you know, if you're, if you know, God bless you, if you're some poor citizen in North Korea, and, you know, that is something that something you had to learn, but don't worry, that's, that's not going to last, right? That torture is not going to last. You're going to be in other lives better and better as you learn, no matter what country you're in. Life will be better as long as you individually strive to be as nice a person as you can. Is me? I'm not. No one's asking. No spirit thinks you're going to be a Mother Teresa or a Saint Francis of Assisi and give up everything, right? It just we just need to get that balance less. And the more you understand that this is a long-term journey, your stress levels should be much lower, right? And when you have these tragedies or these good times, just know all these things are just lessons for us, right? And try to learn from the lessons. So I want to thank everybody to be part of the program today. And I mean, God bless for everybody. And uh, thank you so much for, uh, again, a wonderful time together. And I just want to thank everyone. And I will uh, end us here. Thank you so much. <music>